dashboards look different than traditional worksheets. They have visual elements that are easily recognizable, and often they have a title, but somehow there's just something else that's different. In this topic, we'll explore how to make an Excel worksheet look like a dashboard by creating the header, which is often referred to as the navigation bar or nav bar, and we'll also add some links we can use for that navigation. We currently have the dashboard building file open from the chapter four working files folder, and it's had some extra staging of data done, so we're ready to work through the final things that we need to do to get this workbook ready in order to create the dashboard elements themselves in the next chapter. We have the summary worksheet selected, which should be the first worksheet in the workbook, and this is where we're going to create the dashboard interface. When we think about it and consider probably the one thing that really makes dashboards look different, but that is often most overlooked, is that there are no grid lines, and this is such an easy thing to do. By simply activating the View tab, coming to the Show group, we can remove not only the grid lines, but also the headings and even the formula bar. This may not be something that we normally want to do with worksheets on which people would be doing normal Excel activities, but for a dashboard interface, it's just fine. We're going to leave these features on for now as a guide in placement of our elements. Just remember to turn it off once the layout is finalized. The first element we want to create is the top of the dashboard. It identifies the dashboard content or purpose and sets the stage for what will fall below it on the screen. We could do a big merge and center and enter some text into a single cell that we've made a bit taller, but that has kind of a flat look to it and it kind of looks like a worksheet. By using drawing shapes instead, we can add subtle contours and shadings that will make the dashboard look a lot more dimensional. We can create that, of course, by just using the regular drawing shape tools from the Insert tab. We'll activate Insert, display the drop down for our drawing shapes, and we're going to use the rounded rectangle. We'll give that a click and basically just click and drag to create a rectangle. I'm thinking that our dashboard is probably going to expand all the way across to the right side of the J column. And we probably want this header area to be about three rows high, so we'll click and drag and release. Don't worry if it's not perfectly sized. In my experience, we'll spend a little bit of time creating components and then kind of tweak the width and height of everything to make it lay out nicely and all align appropriately. But this is pretty close to what the final will be. I always like to do one thing here that's a little trick that some of us forget. If you've ever worked with a large data set and had trouble as you scroll up and down that the fields or column labels scroll off the top of the screen and then you don't know what you're looking at, that can be just as frustrating with a dashboard. So we can use exactly the same technique to freeze our dashboard as we normally do with row and column headings. By that I mean we'll go ahead and click to select row four, which is just below our rectangle. Then we'll go up to the View tab and we'll choose to freeze panes. And that should do it for us, even though we probably aren't gonna be scrolling for this particular dashboard, but it's always good to have it in place in case someone's using a smaller screen or a different resolution. Now, when we drew this shape, it's nicely formatted because our theme is already in place. So it includes our colors, but the default colors aren't what we always want. So let's do a little bit of formatting. By selecting the shape and then selecting the format tab, we can choose to have no fill, and maybe we'll go ahead and use one of our highlighting colors, which is dark blue for the border color. If we want to make the outline a little bit heavier, of course, we can expand that again and come down to the weight option and make it just a little bit thicker. So far, so good. Now, our nav bar is eventually going to hold a few different elements. One of those is a set of links to work with specific worksheets in our file. To accommodate the links and make them look nice, we're going to create another shape and it's gonna be a shaded area in which the hyperlinks will reside. To do this, of course, we need to create another shape. So we'll deselect the first one, just as a good practice. Go back to Insert, go back to our Shapes option, but this time we're gonna come down to the Rectangles group and choose the fourth shape in from the left. Then we'll click and drag. We're trying to basically match the width of our nav bar, but again, we can tweak this a little bit in just a moment. We want this to match our blue color. So we'll go back to the Format tab and we'll fill it with the blue color, as well as make sure that the outline is the same blue color. What we're actually going to do is use this at the bottom of the first shape that we had. So those rounded corners that we currently have on the top edges need to be on the bottom. The easiest way to accommodate that without trying to rotate something and get it exactly 180 degrees is to use the Rotate command and simply say that we want to flip it. In this case, we want to flip it vertically 
and now those rounded corners are on the bottom. Now it's time to just try to put this in place. Now the first thing I think we can see is that it's going to be too tall. So we'll go ahead and adjust the height a little bit and then drag it up into our original box. Sometimes it's helpful to zoom in so you can be a little more precise. But basically, using the arrow keys, we want to try to place this so it fits precisely inside of our other shape. This can take a little bit of time. Don't forget that if necessary, you can grab the little yellow node that's on the corners and you can drag those in to increase the amount of rounding on the edges. I happen to be a perfectionist, so I'll sit and play with this for quite a while until it fits precisely. For now, we'll go ahead and just get it close enough and know that normally we want to be a little more precise with it. But I think you can see the idea of what we're trying to create. Once that's in place, we can start to add some textual elements. We want to include a title, but remember, we just have an open shape here. So instead of typing into a cell and working with alignment, we're going to choose the Insert tab one more time and move all the way over to the right side of the ribbon and insert a text box. We'll go ahead and just click and drag, again because we can resize it later, and type in the title for our dashboard, which is going to be Holistic Health Tracker. And of course, we then want to format that so it looks like a title, making it bold, working with even some color and some font. It's also generally a good idea to center it within the text box. And of course, we can continue to move and size and kind of fiddle with it until we get it exactly where and looking the way that we want it to be for the final dashboard. Now, it's actually starting to look like something. We're not quite there yet. So in part two, what we're going to do are add a couple of more elements, including what will become our hyperlinks that will allow navigation from the nav bar itself.